In this video, we're going to take the next step down our section pathway, and we're going to actually create some section views. Quick tour is we have topographic surface, a corridor and its associated alignments and surfaces, and we have already cut some sample lines along said alignment. And we're ready to create some views. We'll come over here in space, and we're going to make section views in model space in this video. Before I do my views, I'm going to make sure that my scale is set to something acceptable for views. Not necessary per se when we're putting them in model space, but it's a good habit to be in. And it'll come into play when we start trying to cut section views for sheets. So if we're going to cut section views, we're just going to come up here and click the section views buttons and we're going to create multiple views. The open dialog wizard. I'm going to choose an alignment and the sample line group for, that I wish to view. You can have multiple groups for a single alignment. And if you have multiple groups with multiple alignments, this pull down would look, would list all of them. In here, I can choose our station range if I don't want to do a specific section of the corridor, but I'm going to use the entire thing. I'm going to leave it the default name, and, but I could name it if I so wish, give it a description, play with the layer, and then choose my section styles. quick tour of the section styles I'll click the edit button here to view this one and here you can have multiple styles with all of these settings so under our graph I can choose a vertical scale this is why I set it to 10 if you were doing 1 to 5 or 1 to 1 you could choose it here give it a horizontal scale and give it a vertical exaggeration if you so wish you could choose the direction whether it be left to right or right to left in our grid we're able to Set these and have elevations and offsets if we so wish. You're able to allow it the title. This is you'll see that in a moment. In their case, we've got it set to put the, the station at the bottom for the title. Horizontal axes, playing with the colors and the labels on each axis. Same for vertical and display like everything else where it's in plain view what labels and so forth to show and you can manipulate all of this as you want and save them for future use so we're going to go with this one this 10 scale i'm going to hit next i'm going to choose draft place it in model space we'll get into the production in another video and we're going to use our default style and this style is what sets off your columns and rows offsets which you'll see in a moment it's going to put them in a grid in our model space and this is how you can play with these offsets you're able to choose to the left and to right and our sample lines are all cut at 60. so i'm going to sample 10 feet wider for this video elevation range i'm going to leave that in automatic but if you had a specific range or a specific height you're trying to fit sheets and so forth, you can manipulate it here. Here are the sections that we sampled with our sample lines. You can choose whether to draw them, whether to label them and change your style. I'm actually going to turn these the labels off on both for the purposes of this video. My code set's still good here, and that is still that style is still good there, so we're good. And I don't want any bands. So I'm going to create section views and click in space to create. And it created a grid, as we said, stationing from here to bottom left and going up, and then back down, and so forth. And all that was handled by the style. Each section view, which is the entire grid, contains sections that we sampled. And all of this information here is handled in our style right here so if I change this to something else you can see how it changes the way it looks okay so this you'll play it with this style a good bit for each one of your organizations that you're doing to get it to look the way you want choosing the right font heights and font styles and colors and everything if you're using pen styles and so forth <clears throat> the surface displayed in the style that I chose 
and this corridor is displayed using the code set that I chose. That code set only had labels turned on for by default along lines for the edge for the uh, paved area. Now, if we want to edit any section, we can select the section view, change the contextual ribbon. We're able to change the entire group or individual views and into and section properties. So in here, since I have one chosen, I will change my section view properties. And in here, I can like change this to finish grade. Hit OK. And notice that it changed that line to that, but it did not change any of the others. So it gives you that granularity of being able to edit. Control Z to get it back to where it was. If I wanted to do that to the entire group, I would choose a few group properties and come over here and change the style here. The same thing is applicable to labels. I can add labels to individual views or to individual or to the entire group. I'm going to do it for the entire group just so that you can see it after the fact. So I'm going to do view group. And now for my corridor, I will choose this label set. We'll go over label sets in another video as well because that can get pretty in depth. I'll hit OK. And nothing happened. Try that again. We'll go to view group. I think I chose the wrong style. We're going to do daggered. There we go. And now we've got labels at the points that were set to be labeled in my code set. I'm controlling these labels by my code set. That's in another video of the series if you'd like to watch it. And just that quick, I've got section views. So these section views are dynamic. So as I change objects in the corridor, these will update. If I added more sample lines, they would be added in. And I can have more than one set of section views for a single thing. So I can come over here and um, create section views again. And this time do a specific range. Let's do from 500. 800. I'll leave everything else the same. Hit create views. And now I've got a different view group. Notice that here, under the alignment that I am sampling, under sample lines, I now have the view groups. Here they are, our two view groups. I can select it in here and delete a view group, which I actually recommend doing it this way rather than selecting it graphically. Sometimes an artifact can get left in the drawing and the view group won't go away. So if you want to truly purge it, the, the cleanest way is to do it from the tool space. That's it on quickly creating view section views in model space. In the next videos, we'll go into some of the individual pieces and parts of this um, so that we can keep these videos at more manageable lengths because there's a lot to go over here. If you enjoy this content, please click like. Feel free to subscribe. And we'll see you in the next